All right, what's up everyone? You know what time it is. It's time for the Game Plan Show. I'm your host, Trevor Rosenthal, coming at you solo from South Beach, Miami today, but we're bringing the heat. If you're a young athlete chasing big dreams, a parent guiding the next generation, or a coach shaping future stars, you're in the right place. This is the Game Plan Show, where we take on the issues happening in, in and around youth sports. Today, we're diving deep into a game changer for every athlete, financial smarts. We've got a special guest who's been there, done that, and is ready to share the playbook for securing your financial future. So buckle up, get ready to level up your money game, and let's get this plan started. All right, so before we jump into this, I just have to say, Little disclaimer, this is not financial advice. Everybody's situation is unique to themselves. And I say that because I've learned this personally. It's a, it's a lifetime game, just like everything else we talk about on the show. We're, always co we're constantly learning. We're constantly adjusting our plan to best, feed our to, to best fulfill our needs in our current situation. And I say that, we're, we're going to understand why I, I start off with that today, but uh, looking forward to a, a great conversation coming up. We have an expert guest, and I'll go ahead and give him a great introduction here. We're th thrilled to welcome our guest today, who brings a unique perspective to the intersection of sports, finance, and parenting. Jacob Turner, a former professional baseball player, drafted ninth overall in the 2009 MLB draft. draft. He's experienced both the highs and lows of a sports career, but his story doesn't end on the end on the field. He's now the founder of Moment Private Wealth, where he helps athletes and entrepreneurs build and protect their wealth. Jacob's journey is a testament to the importance of financial literacy, especially for young athletes navigating the complexities of early success and planning for a future beyond sports. He's here today to share his insights and experiences, offering valuable advice for parents and coaches on guiding young, athlete, young athletes towards financial well-being. Jacob, I wanna dive right into this because this topic of money and sports is only becoming more and more relevant. Um, it's also coming up sooner in life for athletes and parents. Uh, so as we jump in, uh, could you maybe share a specific example of a financial pitfall you often see young athletes encounter and how could parents and coaches have helped them avoid it? Well, first of all, killer <laughs> intro. Um, and for everybody that's listening out there, I think you need to understand context between Trevor and myself. So I know this show is all about young athletes. And the reality is as an athlete, like at some point in your career, you're going to be a former athlete. And chances are you're going to be a former athlete a lot longer than you're going to be a current athlete. So Trevor and I met as current athletes, as catch partners. And now we're talking about business. So I think Trevor and I are a testament to like what sports looks like in real life okay like at some point sports ends and you're moving on to something else in your life so first of all thanks for having me man and to your point i think when i think about um money and the pitfalls that people face i think it also stems from like what we were talking about where this idea that at some point sports ends because we often plan with this notion that like man the checks are going to come in forever i'm going to play forever i'm going to be the exception right and the reality is whether you are Jacob Turner, Trevor Rosenthal, somewhere in between, a future Hall of Famer, at some point, all of our careers end. So when I think about the biggest financial pitfall, it's making sure that you're starting with the end in mind and knowing that like, hey, at some point along the way, I'm not gonna be doing what I'm doing today. Yeah, that's, that to me really sums up where I started my journey. I remember going back to the very beginning when I was drafted, the same year as you in 2009, um, I, would, I remember getting drafted and I had to make a decision. Do I sign this professional contract or do I go to college? Much like you, a similar yep. situation. And, and my parents at that time told me, hey, if you decide to go and, and sign this contract and start your professional journey, you're off our books. We're no longer yeah. financially responsible for your decision. Weird, and right? It's weird. Yeah. And, but I, I look at that moment as being so, so impactful to my life because I, I knew I had to take responsibility. And then there was a few things that happened. They're, they're, I'll, I'll explain with a quick story. So at the time when I had to make this decision, I had a car. I had this, this nice Ford Mustang sports car that my parents had bought me post-graduating high school and going into college. And there was, there was a loan on that car left. And they told me, hey, 
if you sign this contract, I got a $60,000 signing or a potential $60,000 signing bonus. I said, you're responsible for the payments or paying off this car. So I ended up signing, obviously. I paid off the car. But a few months later, like I love this car. This car was awesome. And I took very good care of it. I never drove it in the rain. I was polishing it. I, I felt like a million bucks every time I drive it. Yeah. I, every time I drove, I was a cool guy. But a few months into the ownership of this car, I was coming down the street, going very slow, hit a patch of ice, probably shouldn't have been driving it in icy weather, but spun out and ended up totaling the car. And why I, why I bring that story up is because it really gave me a, a firsthand experience of, of how we can use money to buy material possessions. And that material possession was taken away from me in an instant. The car was totaled. I was able to recoup, recoup some of the value through the insurance claim, but I knew at that time it didn't change my life. I wasn't devastated by losing this material item. And, and, and it made me realize my life, that the decisions I'm making, the type of person I'm doing, the things I'm doing are much more important to me than the things I'm, the possessions I'm spending money on. So mm. to your point of financial pitfalls, I think in our society where we're constantly being marketed to, we're constantly being told, hey, you need the new shiny thing, yeah. you need bigger and better. It's not always the case. Yeah. And this changes forever. I'm not saying that material possessions are bad and you shouldn't uh, be ambitious to provide better or nicer things for your life, but keep it in perspective. And we talk about that a lot on the show of keeping our priorities in line. And Well, you know what's interesting about that perspective, right, is I think one of the unique things about sports is I'm sure you saw this in your career. I'd love to hear your perspective on this. We've probably both played with guys where they're making really significant money, right? Millions and millions of dollars a year. So realistically, like one paycheck you know, if you're getting 12 paychecks throughout the year as a baseball player, one paycheck could literally let you buy anything, like a down payment on a house, yep. right? And I think we've all seen this cycle of, we have this unique experience of like, okay, I've had this opportunity to be blessed with this money and these resources and be able to buy the stuff that I thought was really important, whether it was the Mustang or whether it was a different car or the house or the watch, whatever it was. And then you do it all or you see a friend do it or you see somebody in the clubhouse do it and you're like, you know, he's not any more fulfilled a week later, right? Like the coolness is worn off. I'm curious, I, I, did you see that same perspective in the clubhouse? I did, I did. And it was hard, very hard to understand, especially as a young player coming in those first three years where I remember signing that contract when I, when I first made it to the big leagues. And you see at the time, the league minimum $500,000 yeah. $500,000, I thought to myself, oh, yeah. I will never have to worry about money again. Yep. But then you, you, you quickly see the guys that you're around, that are around, the teammates that are around you, like you mentioned, you go over to their house, they have a, a five, seven million dollar home, and you're thinking to yourself, well, I can't afford that. Like, how, how, do, I, how do I match up to these guys? And, yep. and it, you can get stuck into this comparison game. And um, I will say I was lucky to be surrounded by good individuals that kept the monetary side in perspective and, and they really poured into me as a person, um, not just as an athlete or the stardom and fame that came along with it. So uh, I'm interested to ask you, can you recall a financial decision that you made early in your career, in your career that had a significant positive impact on your financial future? Yeah, I think you know, much like you actually, similar situation. So I think when most guys sign, the first thing they buy is a car, right? So I had a car that I was driving in high school. My parents had a loan on it. They said, if you want to keep this car, you're going to pay off the loan and, and start doing that. And I ended up paying off the loan. I kept that car for a little bit. And it really wasn't the idea of, of keeping that car that was the lesson that learned that I learned that was really valuable. The lesson that I learned that was valuable was starting slow. If I could go back, and this is the advice that I give to every young athlete is, if you can nail the first three to five years of your professional career, you can set yourself up for the future. And it's not because you did or didn't buy that car. It's because you started to develop habits of like, even if I have the money, maybe I, I'm gonna have some delayed gratification. I'm gonna wait till I get to the big leagues. And if I get to the big leagues, I'm gonna buy the car that I wanted. And it's slowly building that lifestyle over time because to go back to our original point, like if we start with the end in mind and we know that at some point our career is gonna end and we're in a position to keep living the exact same lifestyle that we were living when we were playing, then when we're done playing, like that's the holy grail. Yeah. And I think to piggyback on that, the challenge that we have as athletes is we're so young and we haven't fully formed our opinions and our values in the yep. world. These things are 
ever changing. I can say today at 34 years old, the things that are important to me today. So different. So different so than different. they were oh, yeah. at 24 years old. Oh, yeah. And it, it, I'm thankful I'm thankful for a couple of things. I'm thankful that I was I got married and started a family young. That caused me to have a little bit different perspective and put myself mm. second in a lot of my decision making. But I'm I'm thankful for that because it's given me this flexibility. And and the flexibility to me is what I value the most right now, today, as we sit here and we talk in in Miami, Florida. The, the, to be able to to do things like this and not feel a strain or a weight because I made a big decision too early on for something that 10 years later, I might not even value that at all. And I might mm -hmm. look back and say, I wish I wouldn't have done that. So as parents and coaches, and, and these are conversations that I have with my kids. These are the, as my kids are growing up, they're 11, nine and, and six, we're going through a birthday season right now. So we're, we're all, we're, we're, we're growing up and we're starting to have these conversations of, of what is your value? What are your values? What is important to you? And I like to remind them, you know, especially during this, these birthday seasons of, hey, like our family is important. A lot of these other things, what other people have, what you think you might like, like let's try and have a conversation of how to keep all those things in perspective. So I'm interested to ask you as a father of four, mm -hmm. which is awesome. You're a great dad, great family. We really admire you and Kristen, your wife. But what are some age appropriate conversations or activities you've used to introduce your children to financial concepts? Yeah. Well, I think the first thing I, that I tell my kids is, you know, there's only three things you can do with money. Like we can, I think so often we overcomplicate everything with money, but there's only three things you can do with it. You can save it, spend it or give it away. And helping them to understand that if they want something like, hey, you have to work for this and you have to earn this, right? So even if it's something really small, it's like, hey, well, did you, you know, I remember we were at Target the other day and my son wanted a toy. And I was like, oh, that toy's like $5. Do you have $5? And he's like, I don't know, do I? We went home, we counted this money. I was like, you do, but if I let you buy that toy, all this money, see all the money over here in this pile, all gonna be gone. So like, do you want the toy that much? And he's like, maybe I'll wait till my birthday. And it just, it starts to reframe in his mind, like, hey, the things that we maybe want, like we do have to work hard for them, we have to earn them. And there is some level of delayed gratification in that where you can start building that muscle over time. And I think even for me, as I think about like, what was the lessons that my parents taught me? I can still remember my parents growing up. Um, for a while, we used to have a cash drawer. So literally it was like a drawer that I remember my parents would take money out of. It was in our kitchen and it was meant for like extracurricular activities. So like we wanted to go out to dinner or whatever. And I remember on like Friday, if well, there like wasn't money in the drawer, my dad always liked to go out to eat. And, <laughs> And I'd be like, oh, there's no money. Like we can't, and my, and they, my parents had the money to go out to eat, but it was just this, that was how they budgeted in their mind was like, Hey, there's money in this cash drawer. And that like, that lesson's always stuck with me. That's so cool. I like that. I like hearing different ideas and, um, things that I could implement into my home. And I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to steal that one because it is, it is a challenge. You know, this, this financial literacy, we talk about it, it's become more prevalent, especially on social media, in a large part to what the work that you do in informing your clients and, in, and informing uh, anybody that follows you on Twitter, so, or on Twitter or, or social media. So oh. I'll give you a, a quick plug. Follow Jacob on social media to get all of this up-to-date information in regards to finance and the crossover uh, that it has between, between sports, uh, parenting, and, and just our, our youth in general. Um, but, I, I want to ask, kind of leading off of that, you're passionate about educating clients instead of simply telling them what you do. And you're getting ready here. We're, we're in Miami for a reason. You're, you're speaking to a lot of amateur athletes uh, during your time here. And, and so kind of talk about what you will be preparing for and educating yeah. these families on. Well, when I think I try to put myself back in their shoes when I was a 16, 17, 18 year old as an amateur athlete. I wasn't thinking about the business side of baseball for me and you, right? And that comes with the financial ramifications for me and my situation. Like I signed for a lot of money at 18 years old and I didn't understand any of this stuff. And I wanna be clear, like that is okay. That is totally normal. But the thing that I try to do is I try to educate them on, they don't have to be the expert on this stuff, but like trying to educate them, like they've worked really hard for this. And you said something at the beginning of this conversation that I think my mom really put into my head was, we will help you with this, but it's still your responsibility. And that's the same message that I try to relay to our clients. Like they've worked hard for this money. 
And it's my job, it's not my job to tell them how they should spend it, how they should invest it. My job is to help educate them on like, hey, if we do this, like here's some pros and cons to be thinking about. If I was in your shoes, this is the route that I would look. But ultimately, like, I want them to make good educated decisions. Because another point that you made earlier, like everybody's financial situation is different. And like the reality is we don't live life in a spreadsheet. So even though two plus two equals four, that, that equation is going to look different for each and every individual. It, it, it is. And I've noticed that for myself, um, the decisions that I'm making today and, and trying to keep that in perspective because I fall into the category of maybe being too conservative and too on the scale of, oh my gosh, if I make one bad move, I'm going to lose it all. And I don't believe that that's the right way to approach it either. And that falls in line with living life through a spreadsheet. If you're yep. just trying, if you're making every decision in your life based on the financial outcome, you're, you're most likely going to miss out on some opportunities. I'm not saying that's wrong to each their own, but there, there's finding this balance. And um, to your point, it's, it's this constant uh, evaluation of, of taking in the information and making your own opinionated, educated decision on, on with that information available. Um, so I'd, I appreciate you joining us today. Is there any final thoughts uh, that you have for our audience. We're talking to parents and coaches, uh, you know, raising the next generation. And we just want to be a voice to provide that, that great knowledge that experts have in their field and on the yeah. financial side. What, what would you do um, or what would, advice would you give for a parent or coach today? I think even the advice that I would give would, is probably even outside of just like the financial arena itself. It's when I think about sports in general, no matter how far your sports career takes you, like some of you guys will play in high school and that will be the top level that you play. Some will play in college, some will play professionally. No matter what level you play, the lessons that I think me and you have been able to take away from our sports journey, and it doesn't, it's not because we played professional sports. You can take these same level, these same lessons away no matter what level you play at. I would just encourage everybody to be thinking about like, what am I learning through my sports journey? Because when I look back at sports, like, that's what sports gave me. Like it gave me a different perspective on life than I think I would have had without it. That's such a great message. Um, and that's sums up what the game plan show is all about of using the sports venue to, to develop our character, to learn life skills that will serve us beyond the game. And, and so Jacob, thank you so much for sharing your valuable insights today. Your experience and dedication to financial literacy, literacy are truly inspiring. Um, it's been a pleasure having you on the game plan to our listeners we appreciate you joining us for this enlightening conversation remember it's never too early to start planning your financial future take the lessons you've learned today and apply them to your own journey we encourage you to continue the conversation on our social media channels share your thoughts on today's episode ask us questions and let us know what topics you'd like us to explore in the future your feedback helps us create content that resonates with you so remember to, to subscribe to The Game Plan Show on Spotify. Leave us a five-star review and if you enjoyed this episode. Uh, thanks for your support and help us reach young athletes, coaches, and parents. Until next time, keep striving for excellence both on and in and out of sports. Remember The Game Plan is here to help guide you every step of the way.